this young great blue heron stopped by Lake Meyer the other day to try its luck at fishing. I'm pretty sure this bird was born earlier this year and is a juvenile bird because if you look at the neck there, uh, it's kind of got some dark streaks on it and they're kind of brown in color. The adult bird would have more of a solid blue color there, so to speak. But uh, anyway, these uh, uh, great blue herons are great fishers. Uh, that uh, dagger-like bill there is uh, pretty good at stabbing them and then they can uh, throw the fish up in there and swallow it. Besides eating fish, great blue herons are also fond of frogs. They'll eat snails that uh, they find along the banks. I've uh, seen them take mice, snakes, and I've even watched great blue herons pick baby red-winged blackbirds out of the nest and eat them. So they are quite the predators. But uh, if you're uh, canoeing or kayaking along the Upper Iowa River or again uh, fishing along a lakeshore, don't be surprised if you hear the lar loud squawk of a great blue heron as it takes off and flies away late this summer. If you're out for a walk in the woods now in early August, be on the lookout for this beautiful Virginia creeper clearwing moth. Yes, this is a moth and not a wasp. Even though it's got those bold black and yellow and even kind of red colors on it, warning colors, so to speak, this is a harmless moth. But uh, it's certainly got, uh, you know, a good defense there. And they even fly during the day. So, yeah, this is a moth that you will look for in the day and look for them near Virginia creeper plants. So the female lays her eggs on the Virginia creeper plant probably down near the base of the plant. And when uh, the eggs hatch out, the larvae crawl down and bore into the roots of the Virginia creeper. Uh, they'll feed on the tissue there and uh, over winter in the roots. And then next spring, they pupate. And in the summertime, like now, uh, we've got the new moths emerging. And by the way, the adult Virginia creeper clearwing moths only live for about a week or so. So uh, yeah, most of their life cycle is spent uh, in the caterpillar or pupil stage. This neat little leaf-footed bug nymph looks like it would make a great scary character in a science fiction movie. Believe it or not though, leaf-footed bugs are totally harmless to people. The only thing they bother sometimes are plants. Now they've got a beak, like a mouth part that's a, that has, well, it looks kind of like a a straw and uh, they stab that into the plant and uh, suck some of the juices out of it. So that's the way they feed. Uh, notice on uh, the back legs of this nymph right here, it's got those kind of uh, expanded uh, sections there. Uh, they are kind of flattened out so they look a little bit like leaves and that's why it's called a leaf footed bug. Uh, it will turn into the adult form shortly here and the adults look quite a bit different uh, than the nymphs but uh, it will overwinter as an adult and then uh, next spring uh, crawl out of the leaf litter and uh, start laying eggs to make more leaf-footed bugs. But if you're out for a walk in the woods now in uh, early August, you should be able to see some leaf-footed bugs either crawling around sometimes on uh, tree leaves or they also like plants like goldenrod.